seconds. Okay. Live now. Hello, my name is uh, Matthew Zinkoma. I'm the uh, head of the School of uh, Business and Management. Welcome to this uh, session on uh, marketing for peace and marketing careers path in COVID-19 times. I would like just to uh, say thank you very much to um, uh, all the speakers that we have invited, but also the digital marketing team for organizing this uh, event. My colleague, uh, Associate Professor Bob McClellan, the head of the deputy head of school of uh, school of business management, will introduce uh, all our speakers. But I just wanted to say a few words about the, uh, the school and why we are organizing uh, these events. Our, at the heart of our school, our strategy is on authentic learning and this leads to authentic assessment. And we believe that by the time our students are graduating, they have to be in a position to address real world business issues. And they are also ready for uh, life and work. This is our strategy from RMIT. So when I look at this uh, kind of events, I'm always excited and looking forward to the contribution because this is where we test all our theory that we are teaching our students. So thank you very much once again to the digital marketing team for organizing uh, this important event. But also from our school, I just wanted to acknowledge everyone who has been involved in uh, creating this event, from the events team, all the teaching staff, but also all supporting units. Thank you very much. And now I would like to uh, Invite Associate Professor Bob McLellan to introduce our speakers. Bob. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Bob McClelland um, and welcome to this uh, series of talks today from Forio uh, in Sweden, uh, uh, based in Vietnam here. We're going to listen to three very interesting presentations, I, can, I would imagine, and I'll first of all introduce the speakers. We have three speakers, uh, Ms. Zwan Do, uh, Ms. Win Nguyen, and Mr. Frank Ravanelli. So I'll just give you a, a sort of a snapshot of the profile of each of the speakers. Uh, the first um, one I'll profile is Ms. Zwan Do. Uh, she is the digital content media assistant at uh, Forio, and Zwan is a digital content executive with about two and a half years of experience in crafting multimedia content and developing social media strategies for brands in a range of industries, ranging from FMCGs, health and beauty, beverage and spirits, and insurance. I don't think there's much left really after those things. Um, so welcome to Ms. Schwann, who will present third today. Uh, our second presenter today is Ms. Win Nguyen, and she is a Vietnam digital content media specialist for Forio. And Wynn is a digital media specialist with about six years of experience. And she's been handling digital PR and social media and event campaigns and a whole range of projects. Her portfolio includes more than 15 international brands from FMCG cosmetic to high end products. And uh, she's worked with Ogilvy and Mekong Communications as well. So welcome later to uh, Ms. Wynn. But our first speaker today is Mr. Frank Ravanelli, and he is uh, APAC for the digital media uh, for uh, Forio, and he's the marketing and operations manager as well. Frank's got 25 years of experience in marketing, and media and operations, all for e-commerce. He's uh, especially um, concerned with lifestyle, luxury, gaming and fintech. And he's a regular speaker at digital and performance marketing events in Asia and globally as well. So what I'd like to do today is first of all, welcome Frank as our first speaker. 
and I'm sure we'll enjoy. So over to you, Frank, and thank you very much to all three speakers today for contributing to this event. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, thank you very much, Matthews. Uh, also, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Pham, who introduced us uh, to Mrs. Sang and made this uh, uh, day possible. Uh, so we can start with, uh, uh, with the slides. So the topics we cover today is uh, uh, about us, uh, so some background information. Uh, then we go through the four P's uh, of uh, marketing, uh, product, promotion, price and place. Uh, we will analyze new trends in marketing careers. Then our Vietnamese team uh, will share the experience. And uh, uh, we will go through live assignment, mini assignment, and then of course, your questions and answers. Uh, next. Next. Thank you. Uh, so, as for Sweden, we are a Swedish beauty and wellness brand. Uh, we are inventing uh, the skincare industry, and our mission is to make uh, you feel good, uh, look good, and then uh, uh, we consider ourselves successful. Next. Uh, we've been, uh, we just celebrated this month our uh, seventh birthday. Um, we started from Sweden and now we are have a global presence and uh, uh, we have over 3000 team members uh, uh, scattered around uh, the world, the world uh, working uh, with us. Next. And about myself, uh, well, the introduction already covered everything. Just I started to work in digital in 95 and I've been working remotely since uh, 2003. Next. Uh, this is an example uh, that our Vietnamese team uh, compiled of uh, uh, coverage we get uh, um, for Folio. So as you probably know, um, our brand uh, is very popular in Vietnam. And uh, as our local team uh, will explain you in more details later, we are um, working uh, uh, regularly with uh, uh, influencers, content partners, uh, we have partnerships with our brands. Um, next. So we start from our target audience. Uh, so who are we catering to? So who we want to make feel good and happy about themselves? Uh, usually uh, we focus mainly on uh, female customers, uh, age between 20 and 50. So what are the key needs? to be and look at their best uh, all the times. So to satisfy such uh, needs, uh, we provide different products with different uh, price points. Uh, what are the distinctive uh, 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 traits uh, of our target audience? Uh, they tend to be successful, busy. Uh, they want to take care of themselves. Uh, they are willing to invest uh, uh, on a daily routine, their time to do this and they're happy to do it uh, at home or while they're traveling. And uh, Asia uh, is one of our key markets and of course United States and Europe as well. Um, in terms of uh, point of contact with our potential customers uh, and actual customers, uh, uh, we have different uh, point of sales. In some cases, uh, people want to get uh, a better pricing or they want to get limited editions. And in this case, uh, uh, they purchase for a few uh, duty free stores at airports. Then we have our customers uh, that uh, prefer the convenience uh, of uh, e-com. So they purchase uh, uh, through Lazada, Shopee and Amazon or Sephora. Uh, in other uh, countries, uh, they buy mainly from Fora.com or retailers. And uh, well, we are aware that in Vietnam, uh, um, many customers get the Foreo uh, through friends uh, or through resellers. Uh, currently, our official channels are duty free and uh, our own website. Next. And the benefits uh, is we are focused 100% uh, on exponential innovation. Uh, so that would be uh, the first P of uh, marketing the product itself. 
So we just don't want to have a small incremental improvements of what's already existed in the market, but uh, we invest in research and development in order to provide uh, uh, totally different solutions to meet uh, the needs of the customers. Next. And next, thank you. Um, so the current health situation is changing the rules of marketing. Some trends uh, are due to COVID. Uh, some old trends are now disappearing, but the majority of what's happening uh, is just an acceleration of what was uh, uh, ongoing. But uh, due to COVID, the speed of change uh, has been increased uh, substantially. And we will analyze some of these aspects next. Of course, uh, the selection is based on aspects that have the highest impact and also it's partially subjective. Uh, if you have some uh, trends that you want to analyze in more details, please feel free to ask in the Q&A session. Um, what's the good news for you is that in terms of gross domestic product, uh, Asia is still uh, uh, the world powerhouse. Of course, uh, uh, some markets uh, have uh, less growth, some markets have uh, uh, a declining growth, but it's still way higher performances than most of the rest of the world. Um, and our opportunity is that uh, uh, due to geopolitical trends between the United States and uh, China, a lot of factories are being moved uh, across uh, Southeast Asia. Um, and as part of a COVID uh, impact, uh, um, brands and uh, companies want to diversify their supply strategy. What this means is that there are more jobs being created uh, all across Southeast Asia, which of course means more people uh, joining the middle class, higher purchasing power and uh, higher opportunities, both for consumers and luxury brands. Uh, also, we had uh, uh, for many years, the trend was globalization, while right now we see a strong uh, uh, increase in regional ties, which uh, for Asia means, for example, uh, ASEAN countries uh, um, having a stronger commercial, cultural and political cooperation. And we see that the global trade in terms of growth uh, is slowing down due to COVID. And of course, uh, traveling uh, has also been affected substantially. And there are industries which orbitate around the uh, mass traveler um, patterns that we saw in the past. Next. Thank you. Again, a good news for your uh, people in Vietnam uh, who can serve both a domestic market, but also the rest of Asian markets uh, is that uh, um, Asia is basically leading more or less in all the uh, variables that can make a business successful. So in terms of population, uh, in terms of uh, internet users uh, base, uh, in terms of urbanization uh, and uh, in terms of uh, uh, purchasing power. So as you can see, many milestones have already been met by Asian countries and there are even more to come which creates opportunities for businesses to cater to their needs. Next. Um, so we start uh, uh, from the first P of marketing, product. Uh, due to the current health situation, uh, the focus uh, is on hygienic, uh, portable uh, products. If uh, you are in a business or if you can create a business, uh, which uh, provides a substitute for services that would otherwise be used uh, outdoor, you are gaining because uh, uh, people prefer to use uh, products at home versus having to take appointment and take like uh, hygienic measures to go in crowded places. In terms of uh, quality, uh, the expectations keep going up. Basically, no matter what's the price point, uh, every consumer expects uh, uh, a certain level of quality. Uh, one of the reasons is if a, a product is uh, faulty, 
it can also become a safety issue. And now there is a very high awareness about the importance of safety. And also, well, we all know with the power of online reviews, uh, if your product is good, it can be your best advertising. And if your product is not good, the comments from consumers will basically bury its success. Customization is becoming more and more common. And uh, products which are purely aspirational, but they don't have any tangible benefits, had some serious ups and downs uh, during COVID. Some days there is like a revenge buying where people run to uh, buy um, expensive uh, aspirational products, but there are also times when people shift their income to something which actually delivers uh, value to them. And considering uh, all the uh, health, but also social trends in terms of uh, human rights and equality, it's becoming very important for a brand to be coherent with its values. So if you create a product and you say that it stands for inclusiveness, but then some of its features are not inclusive, you will probably have a major backlash. So you need to make sure that uh, your research and development is aligned with uh, what your brand promises as an overall mission. And when it comes to luxury products, uh, everything which uh, meets the expectations of the customer and everything which allows personal cons uh, consumption or consumption in small groups or at home is gaining uh, from uh, COVID. Next, please. So the structure of this presentation is first I talk about one of the piece of marketing uh, uh, in general. And then I give you some examples, some highlights of how we apply this to Folio. Uh, when it comes to COVID, well, we do not have any uh, such change in terms of research and development strategy because uh, our products are already designed to meet uh, many of the benefits uh, that uh, a consumer wants. So in terms of product itself, uh, uh, we don't have uh, uh, any new development other than what we were already planning. The reason being that it can be used at home, it's hygienic, uh, uh, there are not consumable parts. So basically, uh, if someone uses at home, uh, in the case of Luna, there is no need for uh, future purchases. And for UFO, which uh, uh, does require consumable uh, face masks, we keep adding uh, natural options uh, in terms of the ingredients used for the masks themselves. Next. And this is just an overview of our products. Uh, I will not get into the details, but basically for Foreo, we have uh, uh, Luna, we have a UFO, and uh, we have toothbrushes, and we also have other products like uh, beer plus upcoming products. But uh, this co connects to the target audience that, as you can see, uh, it's mainly female uh, or in the case of a uh, toothbrush, uh, it's families uh, and especially uh, kids uh, who usually don't like to brush their teeth that much. But with our products, uh, it's easier to engage them to do so. Next. So when it comes to promotion, um, it became uh, a very sensitive uh, subject uh, and uh, a component of marketing uh, during the COVID, especially when the lockdowns become very severe. Uh, people on lockdown from one side, they want to consume a lot of online content. <clears throat> so you have a very responsive audience. At the same time, uh, uh, people can get upset pretty easily because they're basically confined at home. So initially we saw a trend that uh, many corporations started to just send out generic emails and social media announcements, uh, but they sounded a lot like top-down approach. Uh, the same uh, for hard selling, like uh, when there is uh, uh, a very strict uh, lockdown, 
then people don't want to be bombarded with uh, advertisements. So how to be successful in terms of promotion is to understand that consumers are people. Uh, they want to communicate and they just don't want to be told about what to buy. So considering they want to consume a lot of content, it's important to provide practical advices uh, which help them during uh, uh, the lockdown. So informational uh, promotional messages are more important than just uh, short term sales messages. Unless, of course, um, there is a special day like when Singles Day or Black Friday will come, of course, there will be more uh, sales oriented messages. And who gained and who lost? Well, everything which is uh, direct reach uh, is becoming even more important. And everything which relies on physical channels like uh, printed press or outdoor ads, well, they are diminishing in terms of importance because people are more limited in where uh, they can go and what they want to interact with physically. Next, please. So what this meant for Forio uh, is that we focused on educating and helping people. Uh, we suggested uh, home routines uh, offer remote skincare consultations. And of course, we still have some uh, sales oriented communication, but we keep them uh, uh, limited to specific channels. And uh, we also focus on uh, what our retailers uh, content partners, influencer partners need during this time, which usually means um, to be flexible in terms of uh, financial terms. Next. So in this case, uh, it's an example that we did run a, a campaign for our uh, seventh uh, birthday uh, just last week. Um, but at the same time, we kept it confined uh, to a specific landing page with uh, deals that were worth changing every hour. Next, please. So let's go into the third P, uh, place. So what happened before and what's happening now? Um, for a long time, uh, it was important to be in an offline channel first and then build the brand awareness that way and then basically uh, monetize the awareness through all the channels, including digital. Uh, the reason uh, why retailers charge premium prices for premium space on shelves is basically this, that uh, when you are in a store, your uh, uh, attention is concentrated on a limited number of items that you can purchase. Of course, when you are online and you go on Lazada or Amazon, there are like thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of products competing for your attention. So offline uh, <clears throat> helps to gain visibility because there is a limited uh, uh, supply of uh, alternatives. However, considering uh, um, people shop less in uh, uh, physical stores. Now we have uh, uh, substantial changes, which is, uh, well, in certain industries, you still need the personal interactions, especially if you talk about services. However, uh, online channels have been growing uh, substantially uh, year on year. And uh, people get information online they go and check what our consumers are saying. And when you sell online, you're just a click away. So uh, these are the two benefits like uh, offline, you were reaching people that didn't necessarily know about you, but due to limited number of competitions, competitors, you were reaching their attention. Online, you're just a click away from people that are already aware uh, that they have a specific need and that uh, they are interested in buying your products. So by being just a click away, it means that the attrition rate uh, or the number of customers that you lose along the journey from uh, education to uh, closing the sale uh, is very low. 
Next. Uh, so what it means for us uh, is, of course, we still work with online uh, uh, retailers. At the same time, uh, um, even our own partners like Sephora are moving uh, a lot of uh, their um, operations and investments online. Uh, for us, for example, Lazada and our own website uh, are very important uh, interaction points uh, in terms of distribution. Uh, there are also some cases where you can have a hybrid approach between uh, online and offline uh, distribution channels. So you can, for example, geolocalize your customers through apps uh, or even through uh, Facebook and then target them when they are within a certain distance from your offline sales point. But in general, in terms of careers, in terms of investment, uh, the growth will be in online channels. Uh, was it, this portfolio also, and for basically most of the businesses, also means uh, the importance of finding a good logistic partners. Because of course you sell online, but uh, if you sell tangible products, meaning products that you need to receive at home, then you need to have excellent logistic partner, partners because the customer expects to get the product pretty quickly. So that's why it's important uh, um, to have a very good warehousing, uh, couriering, uh, to know the rules in terms of uh, custom duties and so on for each market. So at the end of the day, uh, even online sales still create a lot of offline opportunities. But instead of creating opportunities uh, uh, at the point of sale, which moved online, they create opportunities in terms of uh, uh, delivering, storing and delivering the products at the home uh, of the uh, buyer. Next, please. Thanks. So, well, these are some examples of uh, uh, offline partners. Uh, Sephora, which is known across uh, Asia and worldwide, and some key partners, uh, especially in Europe uh, and uh, North America. Next. And of course, uh, our main site uh, and our marketplaces, uh, which are uh, the main, they're, they're becoming one of the major points of sales for our products. Next. Okay, now we get to price. Um, price is very interest. Pricing is a very interesting part of marketing because from one side it determines your profits, and at the same time it also uh, uh, determines your positioning in the mind of a consumer. Uh, if you have a low price, well. It can be interpreted as everyday uh, good value at low price, but of course, automatically you lose all uh, um, customers who are interested in exclusive luxury products because by definition, if something is cheap, it cannot be exclusive. At the same time, if you price yourself too high, then uh, uh, the expectations of the consumers may be higher than what you can actually deliver. So price is both uh, affecting your bottom line in terms of uh, profits, and it's also psychologically affecting how the customers uh, see you. So it's very important that you price yourself, well, your products and services based on uh, which type of market you are targeting. So in uh, mass markets, well, uh, usually it used to be uh, you assess your cost per unit, meaning uh, your marginal cost, and then you see what competitors are charging, and then you take the cost, <clears throat> add the percentage that you want to earn, and that's your price. Uh, that's the way it used to be, kind of a top-down approach. And uh, in luxury, well, usually prices um, were determined for uh, niche markets. Uh, so it means uh, select a very high price point and reach the few people who can afford it. 
and then uh, set uh, more affordable prices and create uh, a sub brand to target, uh, let's say, middle class and the wider type of consumers. If you want to have an example of this, it's like Armani, which uh, he makes his own custom made uh, uh, clothing. If you are a Hollywood celebrity and for the rest of the world, there are other lines like Armani Exchange, which is basically affordable more or less by uh, everyone who is interested in getting uh, such clothing. However, uh, what's happening now is uh, um, there is a way more dynamic pricing. So you basically uh, have to change your price uh, almost on a daily basis, uh, meaning uh, your suggested retail price probably stays the same for several years, but your actual price, meaning uh, price minus uh, discounts or GWPs that you're offering, changes very, very often, especially if you are online. Uh, one reason is there are comparison sites which just uh, list uh, products, meaning the same product and different price points on different websites or uh, <clears throat> similar products with a related price. So nowadays, uh, even consumers that usually would not be price sensitive, they still check um, what's going on in terms of pricing. Another trend uh, is between uh, online and uh, offline channels. So for example, we are talking about uh, mass market uh, supermarkets. Uh, some of them keep the same pricing, no matter if you buy in the store and uh, you take the item home yourself versus you buying online and home delivery. Uh, what it usually means, of course, for them to sell online and to sell offline, the cost is different, but they keep the same price. So it probably means the average, the two prices. So at the end uh, on big volumes, they end up with the uh, price uh, uh, margin that they want. On the other hand, there are other type of uh, big retailers and supermarkets which offer different prices if you buy in the stores versus online. So in this case, it means that uh, on the channel where it's cheaper for them to sell, the price will be lower. And on the channel where it's higher, well, the price will be also adjusted to be higher. Next. Um, this is an example like uh, of bot uh, monitoring uh, um, what's going on online. So since uh, mid the last year until more or less early summer, a lot of online uh, sellers noticed that there were a lot of uh, uh, purchases which were started. So meaning people added the items to the cart and uh, uh, they identified uh, themselves uh, as uh, John Smith. But at the end, they moved away from the cart and just went to another website, meaning there were a lot of uh, purchases initiated, but there were also a lot of cart abandonments, which is a mixed signal for the business because it means that there is interest, but people don't really want to pay the full price that they see. But in reality, based on some investigations and also some rumors that were already on Reddit uh, uh, in uh, end of December, this one was a bot, <coughs> sorry, uh, from Google, which was going uh, ac uh, across different websites just to monitor prices. So as you see, dynamic pricing is vital because there are all these tools and all these consumers checking prices almost daily. Next. Thank you. Uh, what it means for us is that, well, uh, we always invest uh, in uh, uh, top uh, skin tech technology and that's what we offer to consumers. At the same time, time we create uh, uh, different versions with uh, different price points. So for example, um, generation free for Luna. We have Luna Mini 3, which is uh, uh, smaller in size, more portable and also more affordable. Luna Free, which is uh, uh, the premium line and the price uh, is of course adjust accordingly. 
And then there is a super premium, which is Luna 3 Plus. So by doing this, you offer uh, benefits to the consumer within the range of the price and of the type of benefits that they expect from you. If they expect portability and a lower price, or if they expect a uh, super premium experience and they're willing to pay uh, that price. So this is a way to uh, serve uh, the market, um, servicing uh, each segment of your target audience without affecting uh, your overall perception of, as a luxury brand. So what we did here is the same that Armani is doing. Uh, so Luna 3 Plus would be considered like a uh, custom made by Armani and Luna Mini 3 is like uh, one of the more, let's say, um, widespread uh, uh, lines that it's affordable and uh, within reach for more potential buyers. Next. Okay, so now we start to see trends in marketing, uh, both for marketing in general and uh, uh, some specifics about digital. So what's common across marketing is considering uh, uh, everything from products all the way down to pricing is basically changing very dynamically you need to uh, obtain, process, understand, and implement the data. Uh, so even what you do offline needs to be understood in terms of uh, return on investment. So the times when people were throwing like a uh, hundred millions budget per year and hope that some of this works are long gone. So now it's uh, at least for every campaign, you need to understand what works, because if you understand it, why it works or why it does not work, then your next campaign will be even better. Uh, there are way more dynamic uh, uh, career advancements in terms of promotions, in terms of seniority, but also uh, people can stay within the same level of seniority but move from one specialization to another. So for example, someone can start in PR and then the company needs uh, to focus more on content creation, then needs more of a copywriter, then maybe you go back to PR, but as like a, a team lead and so on. So you are transferring skills, which include the data skills and the uh, awareness and use of a full piece of marketing we um, across different roles for the same company. This is good because it means that, well, if you are a person who like me is very curious, you get to learn a lot of things. At the same time, the times of when someone joins with one specific role and that role stays the same until they retire, that's gone long time ago. You need to be open to keep learning based on uh, uh, where the market and in specific uh, where your uh, employer and your brand are going. So what's happening is uh, changes in budgets. So with COVID, uh, well, Asia is in a bit better condition, but especially in the United States, there will be a lot of companies restructuring. What it means is they usually invest more where there are results but they also cut costs where there are no results. So that's why data skills are so important because you need to be able to show uh, as a person, as a department, as a strategy and for each campaign, why your marketing uh, investment is creating value for your brand. And if you can do that, you will probably get even bigger budgets. But if you cannot use the data skills to justify and to explain your contribution to a brand success, then probably your career will be affected. Next. Uh, one of the trends is basically location. So for many years, uh, working from an office uh, was considered a local, like normal location. To be honest, this trend uh, to all the skilled workers going to one place started with the industrial revolution because all the uh, tools and the machines were aggregated in one place. However, uh, if we go back to the past, 
like Renaissance and time before, well, uh, the skilled workers work from their own studio and then we went to deliver the end product. Uh, and only like uh, lower jobs like servants were performed at the location of the employer. Uh, one of the advantage of office location in theory is that it's easy to meet and communicate. And well, for the manager, it's a bit easier because they see people showing up and they think that, well, at least they are physically there in the office. If we need them, we know where they are next. However, uh, remote is becoming way more important. It's becoming more important for high tech, for clerical jobs, for accounting, more or less everything, which of course is not logistics, because if you need to be in a warehouse moving boxes, well, you cannot do it from home. But everything which is basically done through a laptop can be often done remotely. Um, it offers flexibility in terms of where a person can hire. And uh, it also uh, opens access to companies to hire globally. And uh, it opens to talent, so to candidates, access to global companies. Of course, um, it's not necessarily perfect. There are some aspects which need to be addressed. Um, for example, if you want to communicate, you cannot just expect to bump into each other at the water cooler or uh, on the elevator and so on. Like uh, you need to be able to um, schedule, so uh, plan communication with your team. The same for communication within the team. Some people may talk to each other through uh, instant messages uh, or through emails, but if you actually want to discuss something, you need to make sure you allocate the time. So what it means is, in my experience, remote working is more productive than office because people focus their communication on what matters. However, as a manager or as a head of department and so on, if you want to coordinate remote teams, you need to be better structured. You cannot just wait for things to happen, but you need to ensure you structure uh, the key points of communication between you and your teams and within the teams. Next. And some companies use a hybrid model uh, meaning uh, they hire remotely, but within a certain distance. Let's say uh, it would be the equivalent of uh, uh, everyone hiring, uh, let's say, in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, but within uh, 150 kilometers from the center, and then people can work remotely. However, once per week, once per month, they all meet together at uh, co-working and they share information. And some companies use another type of hybrid, which is some days of the week you work from home and some days you work from the office. Personally, I suggest not to do this type of hybrid because the company is still paying for office space. The employees, they have to commute. Uh, so basically you get some of the side effects of uh, office but at the same time, you don't have the full uh, advantages of uh, remote. But that's a personal choice depending on how each uh, uh, marketing department or each company is structured. Next. Okay. Now I give uh, space to our team members to share their experience with us and uh, with digital in general. Thank you for listening so far. This is Uy, and so uh, I'm one of the team members for Vietnam Market. So I'm talking a bit about like what uh, me and like the other team members here we do in Vietnam Market. So uh, about my background, uh, I have been working in digital agency for a while, uh, for like three agency to working on the digital field and own of the stuff like project management and client management and then 
uh, working across platforms like digital social media influencers, PR and events. And after I have, I think I have enough experience. So I want to um, switch the side from agency to client. So I now I'm now working for four years and working at digital content media specialist. Uh, next, please. And uh, the responsibilities at Forio, uh, we we have three main responsibilities. The first one, we have to build a very strong relationship with the, the partners. The partners here, including uh, digital agency, uh, publishers, or influencer, any kind of partner that can help Forio to uh, get more awareness and um, more sales in the Vietnam market. And the second one is we have to have a very uh, solid plan for the Vietnam market so that um, when we work with uh, our partner, we can deliver uh, what we what we uh, aim for the, the market. And the third one, we will um, try to build and maintain an active and driving uh, media present uh, in Vietnam, it's not only about like having a very like great awareness, but we try to build friend love and try to make Forio as the uh, the first uh, top of my friend when people think about the beauty gadgets here in Vietnam. Next, please. Uh, next slide. Okay, and um, for this slide, it will be like for you to have a more um, clear vision uh, about uh, what a team member in Vietnam do for the, the P promotion, as Frank mentioned before. Uh, for promotion, uh, previously Frank talked more about like uh, what for you as a brand uh, we, we do uh, in global, but for Vietnam market, it will be a bit different. So um, because, uh, for example, now in Vietnam, we, we haven't had have an offline store yet. So uh, most of the time we will focus on digital uh, in four area. First, digital marketing and social media. In uh, when we have like Instagram account and we uh, sponsor for uh, digital sitcom and uh, drama, and also uh, we work with bloggers, bloggers on uh, the on the kind of YouTubers, content creators to. Um, talk about our products in a more friendly way uh, to to reach out to our consumer in a more effective way. And also we work with a publisher uh, so that they can talk about our brand and they can talk about like uh, many influencers that are using our brands. Uh, and this is very important because like when someone in Vietnam searched about Forio and all of the for your products, they they go to Google and search it, and uh, those kind of uh, online articles they will appear on the first page. So this is very important. So uh, the the first three main points are about digital, but we also do events, and for now we will we will do collaborating with um, other beauty uh, products. For example, we can collaborate with. Uh, a facial cleansing uh, gel so that uh, they can use along with our products to clean their face for our facial cleansing device. So it will bring like it will like a win win for our consumers here in Vietnam. Next, please. And uh, because at uh, working at Forio in Vietnam is we have remote working culture here even before COVID-19. So uh, uh, before COVID-19, we already work remotely, and to uh, uh, in order to uh, for for us to be able to work remotely, we have a very uh, a very very strong system. Like uh, we will have a, a system so that uh, our supervisor can allocate uh, the workload for every team member, and we can follow up like the status of that, uh, which is confirmed, which is uh, bending or what what is the issue of uh, every single task and uh, this is also amazing like when we do the for example when we do the payment for our partners my supervisor she lives in Indonesia she will be the one who approved the payment for me 
I, I will do the payment here in Vietnam and, and upload it on the, the system. And then my post will go to the system and see it and approve it. And then we will have um, uh, a finance and account team uh, who are based in Shanghai. They will uh, proceed that payment and we will pay uh, for our partner via a Hong Kong bank. So I think uh, the remote working culture is pretty amazing when we can like have, uh, for example, uh, a finance team in Shanghai, we can do all of the payment for other Asia countries as well. So we minimize the cost and the time for doing that with a very strong system. And second, transparent cross-market communications. It means that uh, we, we only work here just for the Vietnam team, but we have a group so that we can communicate with other Asian countries as well, so that we uh, can learn uh, from the good and the bad things from other market, and we uh, exchange the idea with each other to make everything better here for, for Vietnam market. And uh, the third point about working remotely, uh, it is very good thing about uh, working remote that you can have like uh, a very like flexibility uh, kind of things, but then you will have a very, uh, you, you need to be very serious about yourself. Like you set the time when you have to work, when you need to submit everything because like every, every month we will have a KBI and you need to allocate your time so that you can uh, meet that KBI at the end of the month. And uh, when uh, we when COVID-19 happened, uh, because we already have that structure before, so we don't need time like other country, uh, other company who work offline in a in an office when they have to like uh, planning everything for their employees to work at home. We don't need to do that because we already do that. So it it very uh, convenient for us to uh, rapidly change everything and because we have a system to track everything so it will be very easy for us uh, to uh, change accordingly to uh, the, the updates of the COVID from the government. And finally, uh, we can quickly adjust to the pandemic situation. For example, when uh, we when the, the COVID-19 happens, we can talk to our partners to try to change uh, the approach, the content, like can you do content like we have some influencers do content like uh, what I do skincare at home when I'm doing the cell quarantine, something like that. And for like two or three months ago when uh, Vietnam announced that uh, there is no more COVID-19 uh, case in the community and then we can quickly change the content to some very uh, bright ideas about like uh, what uh, our influencer do uh, when the COVID ends and we try to um, uh, work on that situation very quickly uh, with our influencer to make sure that every uh, every content that talking about the brand is very um, relate to uh, the situation here in Vietnam. And uh, next please. Uh, next, uh, my um, uh, another team member, she will talk more about our, uh, our daily tasks here uh, at Forio. Hi everyone. Uh, so I'm Solange, just, uh, just to give a brief background of me. Um, at, I'm currently a Forio Digital Content Media Assistant. And before joining a Forio, I was uh, working as a regional digital agency called Lion Lion as a creative and social media strategist. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, okay, so have, like Uyên has mentioned, in Vietnam, uh, for our marketing strategy, for your focuses on three main areas. Uh, the first one is uh, we utilize digital PR, um, but what do we actually do in digital PR? So we are building uh, close and fruitful relationships with our online media partners, such as online publishers, online bloggers, reviewers, uh, and even podcasts, uh, e-magazines, e if they are relevant. Uh, how are we going to do that is that we're arranging like our business profiling and sending out online press releases with optimized backlinks linking back to our um, 
product website, our company website, so that these media partners can learn as much as they can about our, uh, our brand and our product. And then they will create like articles, content and reviews about us. So why digital PR is important for your marketing strategy is because it's uh, first, it's getting you um, a reach to a wider uh, mass population um, channel. And secondly, it's uh, very beneficial to um, managing your on, your brand online reputation because when the consumer has the intent to buy your product, one of the first things that they would do is that they will go online uh, onto the search bar and then they will search up everything that they can about the brand and the product. And now, um, since you have already established all these content uh, blogs and reviews and articles with your online media partners, one of the top results that they will see in the search bar is, is you uh, with positive mentions by all these reviews and blogs. And then uh, this will consolidate um, their evaluation of you and make them more inclined to purchase the products. Next slide, please. Uh, our second tools that we utilize in our marketing strategy in Vietnam is uh, social media advertising. So according to um, Hootsuite and We Are Social Social 2020, Vietnam has a huge online population uh, of 65 million active social media, media users. So this is a huge potential for brands to tap into um, um, by boosting our content uh, to the right demographics uh, to reach the potential customers. Uh, besides this, uh, we're reaching them through our Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, and even LinkedIn, or even emerging trends if they are relevant, like TikTok, like you guys have all been acquainted with over the past quarantine period. Uh, you're also keeping an eye out for your competitors' performance to see, and your own performance to see if the fans are actively engaging with your social accounts, uh, how are your competitors doing to see what we can learn from them and what we can outdo them. Uh, and finally, one of our, our third and one of our most powerful tools that we utilize for our marketing strategy in Vietnam is influencer marketing. So you might have heard this buzzword got thrown around in a couple of years, but some people are still actually confused as what do we actually do in influencer marketing? So we are in influencer marketing, we are identifying and building re relationship with prominent influencers and thought leaders in the industry so that uh, we can integrate and engage them in our own marketing strategies and creative campaigns. These influencers will then create content um, uh, like such as reviews or blogs or videos about us uh, to endorse our product, but in a more genuine and authentic way, not in a forced like manners, because consumers are more likely to rely on a word of an influencer uh, when they are buying a product rather than a targeted ad that they see on their, uh, their feed. And besides that, uh, the cool thing about influencer marketing is that you get to attend all of these um, net cool networking events for not only business pur purposes, but you are also um, expanding your social circles. Okay, so that's conclude my part for how um, a career in digital look like uh, um, in Korea in general. Um, yep, yeah. maybe we can move uh, to our Q and A time now. Okay, um, hi everyone, I'm Sang. Uh, I'm the course coordinator of uh, Marketing Principles. Um, so uh, firstly, I would like to say thank, uh, thank you uh, to Forio team, Frank, Wing, and, uh, and Sung. Thank you for sharing the very interesting um, uh, case study about Forio. Yeah, so uh, we have, actually we have lots of questions from the, uh, from the audience. So I would like to start with um, the first one. Uh, in this critical period, buying uh, beauty products is not a priority. Even for those who can afford, these products should be an affordable luxury. I believe for your products are high priced. How do you convince consumers that your products are still relevant and worth the money? Sure. Um, I think uh, uh, this is very true for companies which focus on uh, makeup. So for mm -hmm. example, everything which is like, um, make yourself uh, even more beautiful so you can go outside to have a dinner and so on. 
Well, um, I don't have data, but I suspect that these companies have been negatively affected. Um, in the case of Foreo, we are more on the um, focus of keep your, uh, yourself and your skin healthy, so then you will be at your brightest and more beautiful. So in this case, um, uh, even during a lockdown, um, especially women, they still take care of themselves in terms of exercising or in terms of uh, uh, keeping their skin healthy. The reason being that uh, the makeup can be done, you know, in 20 minutes and if you didn't do it for 10 years, it's still going to be good. But in terms of your skin, uh, if you kept, uh, if you kept uh, uh, investing time in your skin for 10, 10 years, today your skin is way better. And if you start only today, you will not be able to catch up 10 years of not doing it just in one session. So it's true that uh, people are more selective, but um, short story, uh, sorry, long story short uh, is basically we had record sales online because uh, a foreo replaces uh, treatments and so on that uh, would require people to go outside. So in reality, um, right now for foreo, it's even easier to convince people to buy our devices because uh, if they would go to a beautician and so on, in a few treatments, they would spend way more than having Foreo at home. Uh, of course, um, you know, let's be honest, if someone has been affected in terms of employment, like if someone got uh, downsized or they reduced the salary and so on, of course, it's true, their focus will be on uh, basic needs like food and the housing, schooling for kids and so on. But for many, many people who still have their jobs, uh, in reality, for your gained uh, uh, during this time. So it's not so hard. Of course, we can offer special deals like we showed before an example of a, a birthday special. Mm -hmm. uh, but this question is extremely uh, stronger for brands which focus on, uh, as I said, uh, aesthetics only, like uh, makeup, uh, uh, clothing. Well, people are not going to spend much if they are at home uh, in a lockdown. OK, thank you for your answer. Um, the next question is, actually, I think this is from the student. Uh, some Vietnamese people want to try the product or touch the product before they purchase. How can we build customer trust for a product without available official store in Vietnam? I think this is a very interesting question. Sure. Um, again, this is very true and that's why it's always good to have an offline presence, like we showed the partners that we have, for example, Herald's or Sephora. Um, however, Vietnam is a very specific case mm. because we are so popular in Vietnam that I'm pretty sure if you ask five friends, if they or one of their friends has Foreo, the answer would probably be yes. I mean, not all of them, but let's say you can probably find one person within your direct friends or second degree friends that have a folio. So in this case, uh, if you want to see the product, I'm not sure if I let you try it, but in terms of seeing the products in Vietnam, I'm pretty sure you can find it just by a friend uh, uh, of a friend approach. Yeah. Uh, but it's very true that uh, when a price, when a product uh, has a certain price point, uh, it usually helps if people can see it in a store and then go home and buy it from Foreo.com, maybe at a lower price. But uh, um, in Vietnam, as I said, it can be done uh, through just personal contacts, which is temporary covering for not having a, a direct uh, offline presence. And by the way, I get the, uh, I answer the questions, but if anyone from our team wants to add anything, please go ahead and uh, add your point of view. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Actually, the next question um, is for Sung. Um, um, 
Are there any differences or changes happen in the way you build you build your content before and after the pandemic? As the pandemic is a global issue, do you have to mention about it in your content? Uh, like Frank has shared in the beginning, mm. so after, uh, right after the pandemic happens, our content has switched to a more like at home and home spa uh, kind of ways, where before we were more like um, going out and even um, more like active outside. But then after after the pandemic, um, it's more suited to more like professional home treatment. So it's everything that you can do at home to encourage people to stay in. But uh, we don't have to specifically mention that it's, uh, it's because of the pandemic, but we can lighten it so that um, because social media, it's supposed to be fun. And um, so then you, you would want to interact with it. So we would uh, like subtly label it as in times of uncertainty. Yeah. OK, thank you. So um, the next question, uh, which lots of um, lots of uh, audience, um, they're asking the same questions, uh, which is about the the, um, the similar product with a lower price. So uh, with the development of technology, there are many fake for real products with super cheap prices on the Internet. For example, I can search for for real Luna Mini 3 on the internet with the price between five dollars to thirty dollars why the price for the real forio luna mini 2 is about 120. how forio can cope with this issue sure um there is one okay let's start from the there are two main aspects um mm. consumer benefits and uh, let's say legal but let's start from what the people really care which is consumer benefits so basically this design has been invented uh, and this technology has been invented by Forio. Uh, before us there was another company called Clarisonic uh, which was basically catering to similar needs so basically um, the benefits were similar uh, but they had uh, products which required to change the brushes uh, so basically they were a different technology catering to the same customers. So then Forio came uh, with our founder and he designed a product which meets the same needs, but uh, um, the technology is totally different. And the result of this, not directly, but indirectly, a few weeks ago, Clarisonic, which used to be kind of our benchmark to see how fast we're growing, they closed down while we keep growing in business. So this is an example of servicing the same need with, uh, let's say, better, let's be honest, with mm -hmm. a better technology. Then we, there are the lookalikes, uh, which what it means, uh, they take uh, our products and they try to reverse engineer them. Some parts they can understand how mm -hmm. to do it, some parts they don't. Uh, basically I saw some fakes myself uh, the silicone they use is different mm. uh, they tend to break that I mean based on what I heard I don't know hundreds of people but based on the feedback I heard is that these products are basically the compete like these fakes are basically built on the chip without quality control if they break they just send out a replacement mm. so their costs are different from ours. Mm. What's the benefit for the consumer? Uh, well, I would say it's like if you get the real Armani clothes or if you go to the local market and you buy a random T-shirt which has Armani on it. Uh, I mean, uh, it's not a real thing and mm. it's not the same thing. There are some people that, uh, based on their income, they will probably never consider Forio. So these people will go for the lookalikes. So even if you would sell Forio at half price, which would not be possible usually due to our production cost and so on, these people will not buy Forio anyways, because we will never be cheaper than the fakes, because they don't invest in research and development and they mm. use different materials. Uh, so basically it comes down to the consumer. Uh, 
do you want to have a real product or do you mm -hmm. want to have a fake? If you think the fake is good enough, I mean, it's a personal choice. That's on mm -hmm. a consumer level. Then there is on a legal level, which is yeah. uh, if you sell a fake Armani t-shirt at the market, well, mm -hmm. it's counterfeiting. So it's not legal. Uh, mm -hmm. So depends on the laws of the country, but a lot of these uh, uh, fakes have been taken down. What it means, it means that if they close a the business, there will be no after sales support. Like yeah. uh, if it breaks, uh, so it's, uh, there is a consumer side, which is personal choice, and there is a legal side, which is, is not allowed to do it. Uh, and that also influences the viability of the businesses. So short answer is uh, if you're like, a, you know, Ferrari, Audi, Mercedes, that you invest in research and development, your costs will always be higher because you are the one actually creating the product. And also, even if you would have your price, many people will still not buy it. You cannot compete with the cheap uh, lookalikes. Um, yeah, that's that's basically uh, my point of view. Yeah, thank you, Fang. Uh, because of the time limit, I think we can take uh, two more questions. So the next question is actually about the influenza. So I think this is for uh, Yun. My question regards the trend of influencer marketing strategy. I've seen Forio sending out PR packages to many influencers from I follow online. How would the company react if the if the influencer didn't enjoy your product and share their negative opinions online? Oh, okay. Hi. I think this is a very good question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And um, actually, um, to be honest, uh, this uh, I think never like happened before because like we we try to first we try to classify our influencer into many uh, tier like the the celebrities one and then the micro influencers one something like that and for the celebrities because uh, because of their uh, their brand image. They they normally if they find something very uncomfortable, they will try to talk to us. But like uh, I have something with the product, uh, mm. did I use it correctly or something like that, and stuff. But like for all of the influencer I've been working with, they they are super happy with the product. So we haven't like have any cases like that before. And also for the in the micro influencers. So because they are very small, so uh we we actually didn't pay, pay them to talk about us we just mm -hmm. like send them the product and like let them experience it and yes it's true like sometimes they will say uh something like negative about the product mm -hmm. but most of the time the negative thing is about like foreign product is very expensive so that is the negative one but <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but but it's not about like the product mm. is like broken or more function or cause anything like to their skin. They are very happy with like the result of the mm. product ring. So um, we, 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 we haven't like tried to interfere with their review because like we, we try to make it uh, like as natural as possible and also uh, communicate about the price so that because we, we um, try to talk about the product throughout the years. Uh, from January uh, until uh, November. November mm. we will have a Black Friday when we sell the product like super sell for like 30% or 35% of the, the original price. So when people know it's expensive, so but they know we will sell at like November, so they will wait for that so and to buy the product with a, a cheaper price. Yeah, so that I think that is the way how we try to solve one of the negative issues about price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and this is the the last uh, question, actually from one of the lecturer of digital marketing. So, do you see your products as competitor to the premium brands of personal care? or as the collaborator. This case is interesting for students in my class as we are doing a project on the premium brand of personal care. Sure, um, well, that's very good that uh, this can be applied in practice. Um, 
when we talk about personal mm. care, is it mm. about uh, uh, skin care? Like, could I have a couple of pointers more about to what we are comparing for you too, so then I can answer? Uh, I think her project is about L'Occitane. Yeah. Okay. L'Occitane ah, okay. skincare okay, products. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, mm. okay. Yeah. Um, I would say in this, for this specific uh, brand, I would say we are probably more complementing them. Mm. Uh, so in the case being, uh, well, uh, maybe UFO can be considered a competitor uh, mm. because uh, of uh, consumable products, but in terms of Luna, I would say it's complementing them. So, for example, um, in the morning uh, you have your cleansing routine, and then in the evening you come home, first you remove your makeup, uh, and then uh, uh, you use uh, Luna, and then you use uh, L'Occitane in terms of consumable products. So I think uh, they're probably complementing each other. In terms of if a target audience are similar, I'm pretty sure they are. Um, so for sure there will be overlapping. And in general, I mean, we are always looking for partnerships mm -hmm. because, uh, well, um, I mean, it's not a secret that people will just research online, we will find the similar brands, we will find complementing brands, we will find competing brands. So, I mean, there is no secret anyway to the information the customers can get. So if you see that they want to partner with us in Vietnam in any way, we can mm. always discuss on a separate call. Um, but I think, uh, well, nowadays, uh, I can see based on market research or on my wife, like a uh, uh, beauty section, that basically there are many products and usually women know uh, which product is better to use at which stage of a beauty routine. Uh, so I think in reality, there is a lot of space for partnerships. And even if it's true that uh, we are all competing basically for the same money, because everyone, we all have limited, uh, you know, savings so that we can invest in uh, skincare and so on. Uh, across time, there is enough that uh, a customer can have Foreo and L'Occitane and other products as well. Okay, so thanks a lot, uh, Frank and team. Actually, we still have so many questions, but um, we don't have because of the time limit. So I think uh, we should move to the activity now. So soon you will uh, share about the activity, right? I think it'll be Frank who will be sharing about the activity. Okay, okay, yeah. Sure. Uh, could you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So the price we give uh, is uh, Luna Mini Free, uh, okay. but it's also a joke from uh, uh, Dinda who created our slides. Uh, next. And uh, so it's a hypothetical scenario. So I'm not talking about uh, Forio or anything specific. Just think uh, if you, like a student, would have created a new extra luxury high-tech skincare product, which would still be a device, but it would not be for you. It would be something totally different. And you want to launch it on the Vietnamese market. Uh, today, we spoke about the four piece of marketing. So can you please uh, summarize three marketing initiatives that you would suggest for your, in this case, your brand to be successful in Vietnam. And I think the keyword here, the keywords are actionable and practical. So for example, if you say find good distribution channels, well, that makes 100% uh, sense, but it's not actionable because it doesn't tell me what I should be doing. So for example, if you say, use this specific retailer in Vietnam, which would be a good match for a new extra luxury high tech skincare device, then that's going to help us. So yeah, it's up to you, but basically um, the more detailed, the more chances you have to win uh, uh, the prize for today. I think uh, um, you, in terms of university team, created a, kindly created a spreadsheet so if the students can please uh, put the answers there and then, uh, well, I will mention 
who is a winner. Of course, please don't take it personally, like uh, it's very subjective choice. So maybe I'm sure all the uh, answers would be really good, but just because for practical reasons, I need to choose one. So well, one will win and the others will not. I'm not, so, I'm not sure about how, how much time do you want to allocate to this? Like five minutes, 10 minutes or? 15 minutes so that students can have time. Okay, perfect. Or so, okay. Does anyone have any question about this scenario or what we expect? Otherwise, I will probably go mute for 10 minutes and then I come back when uh, to check the answers. Is there any question about the exercise? Don't be shy because the more you know, the more likely you are to win. So please, uh, if you want to ask, go ahead. Uh, excuse me, Sung Hoi, uh, would you like to share the Excel file? Ah, sure. Uh, <laughs> ah, sorry, I thought it was it. Go ahead. I think I put it in a chat on a live Q&A event. OK, uh, yeah, OK, so for, for, for students who would like to join the, um, the activity, so please go to the Q&A, the Q&A session and then you will see the link there. So just click on the link and then you can uh, type your answer uh, to join the contest. Yeah, I see some early adopters are already doing it, so that's great. Yeah. Uh, Please make sure to account for uh, space that our people, may, our cells uh, that our people may be using. And yeah, cool. So I will be back in five minutes and then in 10 minutes we check uh, the end results and, okay. uh, and then we assign. Okay. Hello, uh, 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 Sung and I will, uh, will be here. So if you um, if you want to join the contest and you have any question, please feel free to ask us. Hi, Sung Hello. Yes. Yeah. So, so why the um why some students they are they are um doing the um typing the answer on the Excel file? Can we um can we go on with the the remaining questions because we still have lots of questions. Yeah. Maybe Frank and uh, and Ying uh, wants to try as well. Yeah, I think um uh while waiting for everyone to fill in, mm. go through the rest of the questions. Hmm. Okay, so um, so the next the next question is, um, what do you see as the key differences between consumers in Vietnam and other countries? Or maybe this question is relevant to Frank. Yeah, I think this question yeah. is relevant to Frank. Okay, okay. Or maybe you, you can help to answer this. Okay, uh, the difference between like Vietnam mm -hmm. and other countries, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I think uh, the biggest uh, difference is for some developed country, mm -hmm. uh, for your product cannot be considered at a very luxury one because their living standard is high. 
but for Vietnam, um, because like uh, most of the time, it's, it's a very like very very expensive beauty gadget. So I think this is the, the biggest difference. So we we have uh, so uh, it create a very like uh, they, uh, a very like big gap when someone decide whether they should buy our products or not. Mm. Which lead to our strategy is that we have to uh, do a lot of um, uh, com communication to educate uh, the consumer about the products why mm. we we should buy for you instead of other like cheaper uh, brands uh, like us. So I think that that is the biggest one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the next question is um, from Ngoc Trung. I think this is the student in luxury industry. Should we apply promotion like um, discount or lowering the price to trick the consumers willingness to buy our products, especially in special events? Hi, I think um, yes, if it's special events like mm. uh, mobile ones that everyone is having um, that every every brands are on that we wouldn't want to miss out like 11 11 singles day 12 12 or black friday cyber monday these are also the key events that mm -hmm. um, that brands should be tapping in uh, especially for um even for um like luxury skin skincare luxury gadgets uh that is alpha for you okay thank you uh Sun. Um, I have um, one more question. Um, many users complain that they feel annoyed about the guarantee of products. For example, if the product has any issue, customers have to send it abroad and it takes time as well as shipping fee. That leads to the hesit hesitated behavior of consumers when considering buying for your products. So how can the company handle this problem? About the guarantee. Uh, so actually we have heard uh, some complaints about this as well and this mm. has actually has been taken into consideration as to mm. how um, mm. we can address this issue and it's um, still uh, being addressed uh, internally to, sell, to to how we can solve this. As in Vietnam, since we uh, don't have a uh, physical store yet, it's mm. a bit um, hard for the guarantee process. So yes, uh, this is actually being taken into consideration to uh, address and adjust. OK, thank you. I think um, I think maybe now uh, we can look at the answer um, from the students. Yeah. Because uh, I've seen some students, uh, they are already they are already typing the, the answers on the on the Excel file that we share. Okay. Also, yeah. just uh, note that actually uh, we can take uh, take in all the questions. Maybe mm. create a file. We can create a file so for everyone to fill in the rest of their questions, and then mm. we can uh, address them internally after our event, and yes. then share this work with Ms. Sang so that. Uh, mm. She can share share the answers back to you guys. OK, thank you. Maybe we can go through the uh, answers for the live assignment now. 
Uh, sure. However, I see a lot of people still uh, adding. <laughs> I see names and uh, um, I will let, if it's okay for everyone, I will let them finish because otherwise we, we lose the ideas. Uh, I know that there are some, you know, practical reasons, some time constraints, but uh, if it's okay for you, um, the, let me check, um, the other assignment, the one they can do in a couple of days, it's quite self-explanatory. So if it's okay for everyone, maybe we just keep that part, meaning that they, they still do it, but I will not talk about it, but we give them a few more minutes now to finish, mm. uh, if it's okay. Yeah. Okay. For the other one, uh, which can be done uh, after the class, mm. uh, do you have uh, the document link? Yes, I. Sure. Okay. Super. I, I, okay. I, will, I, will, uh, I think uh, after this activity, I will send uh, um, the document to our students so that I can mm. participate. Yeah. Okay. Super. Mm. So yeah, we will not discuss that one now so we yes. save that time and we will assign mm. extra five minutes to get a hypothetical scenario yes uh, uh, and if anyone uh, i think it has already been discussed by our team members for the mm. questions which have not been addressed uh, or if anyone has any question in the future uh, you can search for your uh, linkedin i would say linkedin is probably mm. the best for this for your LinkedIn page to see uh, company updates, or you can search our free uh, names uh, on mm. uh, LinkedIn and you can send your questions. If it's for social media content, it's more relevant. You send it to our team members because they are the experts. Uh, if it's for marketing in general, it's up to you if you want to send it to me or to them. Mm. Uh, just search for our names on LinkedIn and uh, uh, you can connect via even in the future. Uh, yes. Right now, we are not adding people to Vietnam, but in general, we are always often uh, hiring people. So I suggest them with a for your, uh, for your LinkedIn page, they know when there are career opportunities and then they can decide if uh, it's of their interest or not. Okay. So I think we can give the students two more minutes to finish their activity. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Two more minutes, students. Rush, rush. <laughs> yeah. As you know, in marketing, the timing is everything. So exactly. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start reading them, so at least I know the okay. ones. Okay. Yeah, yes. Okay, what I notice is thank you everyone because uh, the ones that I read so far are all uh, actionable. So that's good. That's what you want, like uh, specific ideas uh, or uh, specific, uh, a generic idea plus specific examples. So that's, that's very good.
Time's up, students. <laughs> Thank okay. you for your participation. Thanks a lot. Okay, so now let's let's go through them quickly. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so I have a tie between two, so I will let the team members yeah. decide, but I'm not going to tell. Uh, they will decide. Uh, so I'm giving them the, the ones that I select, but then they will decide which one uh, it's actually the, the best. Um, the students are very creative. Lots yeah, of ideas. Amazing, yeah. yeah. Love that. Amazing. That's the spirit. That's what you yeah. need. Uh, uh, well, to be honest, in every career, but especially in marketing, that's what you need. Yeah. If you are different, then you will mm -hmm. succeed and it will cost less. And uh, if you're not different, well, you will have to spend a lot of money to make people believe you are. So that's yeah. great. Uh, uh, okay, wait, I lost it. Uh, okay. Okay, couple of seconds, uh, is it 20 seconds, yeah. then we have the winners, yeah. <laughs> sure. So our team members, I don't know who mm. among the two of you wants to be the speaker, but uh, I sent the, the rules to check. Uh, you choose which one, just vote among the two of you and then uh, one of you announces. Um, yeah. I share the numbers on Skype through our Vietnamese channel, uh, if you can check. Uh. But yeah, in general, excellent. Uh, so yeah. thanks everyone. Uh, if you're not a winner, don't take it personally. Uh, personally, there are two which I like the most, but everyone is uh, really doing very well and is doing actionable, as I said, which is extremely important. OK, we need a winner. Uh, team, <laughs> one, of the, one of you decides now who, who win. OK, great. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I got the winner. Go ahead and announce it, please. I think the winner for the live assignment would be a student, mm. Biku and Kang. Sorry, if, if, am I pronouncing your name correctly? <laughs> it's Winku and so we really like the first one. Yeah, mm. we really like all your answers because at uh, first it's a uh, very practical, uh, very practical, and um, actually um, uh, use like taking into consideration what we have uh, present, uh, like our key approach of what we have presented in the uh, assignment, and mm. um, the rationale is quite valid too as to why mm. we are using uh, TikTok in and, and emerging channels and emerging channels that I cannot overlook. Uh, Frank, maybe you want to add more or? No, that's all. Uh, congratulations <laughs> to the winner thank and uh, thanks to everyone else. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we will still, well, if it's okay, I, I, I'm still sharing it with uh, our additional senior management in case some ideas uh, 
come out from this, so uh, everything uh, is very valuable for us. Um, yeah, so the other assignment will be dealt internally, so I guess mm -hmm. if you want, we can just uh, thank you so much for, for hosting us and thanks to everyone. It's amazing how uh, many, how much feedback we're getting through a spreadsheet. Anything else you'd like to add? Or? Uh Okay, thank you everyone. So next, do, we, do you want to share about the next assignment during the um, Forio UFO? Ah, okay, sure. Uh, well, okay, <laughs> next, next, next. Yes. Okay, next. Thank you. <laughs> okay, no that's what you, you win. Next. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, okay, the question is basically, uh, this one is for Forio. So yes, it is for what you saw so far, considering that the Luna UFO uh, okay, we can also add bear are like uh, uh, key products. So think about the uh, UFO, Luna and bear when you answer these questions. Um, the question is basically, again, three actionable marketing strategies or can even be tactics, like uh, maybe two more generic, one more specific as you prefer. Uh, here the keyword is that you are not already doing. Uh, so it means you will have to, if you have an idea, check if you're already doing it. If you have an influencer in mind, check that you're not already working with them. So it should be something different from what we do. Um, there is a format in the next slide, but uh, there is a URL for that. So basically uh, your uh, teaching uh, uh, staff will share this, so you don't have to type in now, but uh, the answer needs to be in this format. Uh, back to the previous slide, please. And a uh, uh, couple of days, uh, if you can send uh, this field, uh, well, I call it a report, but uh, this field suggestions to myself, which is frank at forum.com. And uh, well, this one will take a tiny bit longer because I would like to have time to actually read everything in details. Uh, by September 10th at latest, uh, mm -hmm. We will let you know about the price. I don't know how we give a price. Do we give it in purse? Do, do you, will you mail it from Vietnam for our team? Or even the one that you already gave? I think I would send a gift to um, Ms. Sang so that she mm. can deliver to the students. Yes, okay. the student can contact me. Nguyen, Gu, and Kang. So you can contact me uh, for the first gift. Okay, perfect. Yeah, perfect. and for so, the second one, maybe later after the 10th of September. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So yeah, we, we solved the logistics. <laughs> <laughs> we, as we said before, it's vital to get the product to the people. Uh, mm. And then, yeah, that's all basically. Um, yeah. uh, the key, as I said, is like, please check that you are not already doing it in Vietnam at least, and please focus on uh, Luna U4 or beer and use the format that uh, I, I put there. Uh, you can just copy that format. Of course, please don't uh, don't edit the original file because if everyone does, then you just end up overlapping each other. Uh, copy what's in that file, paste it inside an email, actual body of the email, and then answer there, and then send it to frank at um, I, I'm not, depending if we get three or four answers, I will say thanks to each. Uh, if I if we get more, maybe I'm not able to answer individually. But uh, uh, well, uh, again, even if we get 100 and they're all great, I need to select only one winner. So please, uh, we have a 99, don't, don't get upset. It's just the way sometimes things are. OK, I would say from my side, that's all. At the last slide, I think we have our social uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, OK, perfect. So career page uh, is on forio.com slash hire me. LinkedIn, well, it's Forio and my personal LinkedIn. Or you can search our team members as well in case you want to connect. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, so uh, do you want to share about the deadline? Ah, yes, uh, September. OK, good. Yeah. Okay, so like Frank has mentioned, so I think we are for the mini, mini assignment, um, mm. our deadline is end of date, uh, end of date on uh, 13 of August, uh, for the latest, and maybe on the more, uh, by uh, 10 a.m. or or 14 of August to be the latest, but maximum one 
one day. Yeah. So uh, that would be 10 a.m. this Friday. Yeah. OK, so deadline. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a teacher. I have to set a deadline. <laughs> Deadline 10 a.m. Um, Friday 14 August. OK, so this is the deadline you want to join this um, this activity. OK, now I would like to invite um, Aaron, our senior program manager of digital marketing for the closing speech. OK, so thank you very much, Seng, uh, for a job well done in moderating the session. Good job. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, on behalf of the digital marketing team, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the people who made this uh, webinar possible. So foremost, uh, I'd like to thank our distinguished speakers from Forio, uh, Frank, Quinn and Swan. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we are very grateful and honored to have you this afternoon. And we definitely learned a lot about Forio. I'm interested to buy and uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to win a gift, but anyway, <laughs> that's for our students. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we learned also about uh, what uh, what were the transformation to the four P's marketing four P's and I wish your company the best of luck uh, amidst this uh, COVID season, uh, COVID period. And uh, also some people to thank. I'd like to thank the marketing principals teaching team, uh, most especially to Sang, the very hardworking uh, course <laughs> coordinator to making in making this uh, event successful. Uh, thank you very much, team. Uh, I'd like to also extend it to my uh, digital marketing team. Uh, they have really, you know, uh, well advertised this uh, <laughs> webinar. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, also, I'd like to thank also the events team for the technical assistance and I'd like to thank also our leadership team headed by our head of school, Professor Matthew Nicoma and our deputy head of school, Associate Professor Robert uh, McClelland. Thank you very much for the support and uh, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, my dear colleagues for taking the time out of uh, their busy schedule to join us today. And uh, last but not the least, I'd like to thank all our students for joining us today. Your presence, your questions, your answers are a strong proof that you are thirsty for knowledge and rest assured that we are going to be here to support your studies. So in closing, I'd like to thank everyone and uh, have uh, be safe and still enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much for hospitality. Thank you. Thank You're you, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well Thank done. you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.